Shalom to everybody. Can you have an idea of my feeling right now to see you? Huh? I will start to tell you a, a, a little bit about myself. I grew up in Jerusalem. I've been sixth generation born in Jerusalem. I live in Mea Sharim, the most religious part, strong religious. My father was a big, big tzaddik, big rabbi. He make 18 books of, of the law from Judaism. I'm living in a very small apartment, 70 meters, 10 kids. In the 50s, arrived to Israel new immigrants from Yemen. The government sent the old Yemenis to Rosh Ain. Rosh Ain is a city near Petar Tikva, special city for the Yemenis. In this time, in 53, 54, Israel has not money to build homes, they build tents. And these people, the new immigrants, they live in tents, many kids, Winter, blote, I don't to say blote in English. You understand what I mean? Huh? Not. My father, Zechat Tzadik Livracha, takes a little truck, a little car, goes to Rosh Ayin, and takes a microphone and says, People, if you have not a place for your children right away, I have a place in Jerusalem. You understand? In this 70 meter with 10 kids, there's a place. <laughs> and he brought in five kids, Yemeni kids. I used to sleep in my bed with two Yemenis. <laughs> when my father passed away seven years ago, the Prime Minister Bibi and F from the government come to my home, to me at uh, for Shiva. They come in, they see the room, they see the apartment. I tell them the story, tell this is my bed, my bed is still there. <laughs> but the one that say, here I sleep with, with two Yemenis. And this, I finish all of this speak, one from the boys that sleep with me together, Rafael, he comes in in the room to, to the shiva and he started to cry, this is my home, this is my bed, this is how you sleep here. They see this life, what I say. After the six day war, everybody knows that the six day war, before the war, everybody thinks that Israel is destroyed complete. Because the all Arab nations, attacked in one time Israel. Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, everybody in one time attacked Israel. And none of you know the Prime Minister was in this time Levi Eshkol. He gives a speech to give a coachman and he started to shake in the middle of the speak. And God make a miracle six days Israel succeeds. They come in close to Cairo, close to Damascus, close to Le in Lebanon. They, they come to Jordan. They take back Jerusalem. And the fourth day that we coming to the Western Wall, to the Kotel in Jerusalem, I was there. I stay and I say, what can I give back a gift to God? a present for God, for the miracles that only seven days ago everybody left Israel, everybody that has a passport left Israel. Everybody thinks finished. After six days, a miracle like this, I say the best gift that I can give God back 
is to care for his children. Because the most happy that you can do for a father when you love his children, you caring. I don't know if you know, in many sidurim, you praying in the morning, they said, before you praying, say, I take of myself the mitzvah to love my brother like I love myself. For after the reyach hakamocha, love your brother like you love yourself. This is written in the sidurim and did what you need to say before davening. One time was a child, later he became a big rabbi, and he asked his father, Father, what connection is love your brother like you love yourself with praying? If you go to pray, you ask for health, for, for, for success. What connection? In the Torah, you have also that you say every day, Vo'afto et Hashem Eloikecho. Love God. The Torah says that you need to love God. The boy says to his father, I think will be a big meaning, more meaning, if before you go to pray, you say, God, I love you. And then you go to pray. What connection has with your brother? The father answered him. You, because you don't marry, you have no children, your question is right. But the time will come then you, you, when you will have children, you will be a father. And the children will ask, what is more important? Love the father or the father want to see that the children love one the other? You will say, mine proud, mine happy to see my children, they love one the other. This is the connection. You go to speak to Hashem, the Hashem is the father from Am Yisrael. The Torah says, Banim atem l'ashem elokechem. Every Jew is like a, a child. If you go to pray, you ask for help, you ask for success, you ask for children. If before them you say, God, I promise you I will love my brother like I love myself, then you show sure that your praying will be received. This I think when I stay by the Kotel and I say, I must to leave Yerushalayim. They have many beards and payers there, with Schwarze Kapelutschen. You know, I will go to a place that they need me, that nobody is there. Migdala Emek, and this time was the worst place in Israel. Crime, drugs, like Harlem in New York. I, I can't explain you right now why, but this is the fact. Every day in paper, they blew up the city, they killed. I decided to go to Migdala Emek. I come to Migdala Emek, I was naive, you know, I come from Mea Shearim. First question what I ask, who is the yeshiva? What yeshiva? I ask, who is the Talmud Torah? Or Talmud Torah? Who can I find the youngsters? Because I have a special feeling for the youngsters. They say in the disco. Disco? I never hear disco in my life. In Mea Shearim, you don't know what means disco. I come to the disco, first time, I think maybe there's a yeshiva called disco. I go to the disco and I see, uh, you know, dancing and fight. But they look in me, they come in, a rabbi with a board and payers. They, they thinking maybe somebody died outside. I look for a minion for Kaddish. <laughs> what are you doing here? I say, I came here. I want to, to leave you. You want to leave you? You crazy? Everybody thinks to go to Yerushalayim. You come here. I say, yes, you're my brother. If you leave you, I also can leave you. And I decided to give my life for this, for this boys and girls. And they started in something like a magnet comes, they became very close to me. Then my home became the disco. They started to come to me with help, with this, dancing. I used to go every night to the disco. <laughs> and <laughs> it's not so bad, you say, huh? The disco is only the place because they, they don't go to, to the school, not to the, any place. This was the place there. And then somebody tell me that they have a big problem there. What happened? Many girls 
maybe it's a shame to say in the front from everybody, many girls, because they pull, they, they sell themselves for the Arabs near Migdala Emek is Nazareth. It was a very bad situation. I say, who is the organized that may organize something like this? I can't believe that can be. Because I see they tell the so many place come cows from Nazareth, from the place. They, they say somebody the name Pinchas. Pinchas is the man that he organized. Pinchas, who is Pinchas? Pinchas is like El Capuna. You know El Capuna? He was the, the worst gangster. The, the, the police as a fray for Pinchas. I decided to go to Pinchas. I go to his home. Till today, I remember the neighbor downstairs, uh, Ashkenazi from Romania says, the rabbi goes to the Goslin. The rabbi is going to the, to the murder, you know, to the thief. I come in, I knock in the door, Pinchas opened up the door, he says, what are you looking? I say, what are you looking? I want to drink with you the chaim. <laughs> you're looking, you're, you're crazy. Uh, yes, yes, let me go in. Pinchas, why are you doing this? This is my job. I make money. Pinchas, I will, I, I will do for you. I will go to the factories and find a job. I will work in a factory. I stay up seven o'clock in the morning, six o'clock. If somebody tell me what to do, I kill him. Tell me, Pinchas, what you like to do. Give me your dream. He says, if, we'll have, if I will have a truck myself, I can stay up when I want, and I will deliver it with my drug, with my drugs, people, something, this will me, I make money, this make me happy. I don't know why I tell you this. I go back, I, was, I have a home in Yerushalayim, sell the home, take the money, and I buy a truck. I come to Pinchas, and I say, here you have the keys, you have a truck was a big factory in Migdala Emek called Baget O, very famous for, for women's uh, uh, clothing, uh, uh, Reklach, you know. They sent us every day to airport, to Europe, to Germany, to every, many places. I go to the manager, I say, here is a man, he has a truck, you will give him the job. From this minute, Pinchas changed himself not to believe. He started to clean the old city from the old crime. No Arabs can go in. They were afraid till today to go in in Migdalayim, from the Pinchas. He changed himself complete. <laughs> Was at the make a television of Mir in 1970, the television, the headline was Disco Rabbi. And Pinchas speaks in this television. He don't, he don't shame to say. He say, I was like this, and I do this. And when I see that somebody that don't know me, any connection, a rabbi, comes and give me a talk, and trust me, and believe in me, I decided I will change myself. And it became a Shuba. It became back to Yiddishkeit. This is show you. This is show you. This is show you that if you try, can be the worst. But he has an ishome. He has an ishome. Every Jew has a soul inside. You need only to come and to speak to him. Then somebody tell me my brother is in jail. I say to him, your brother is my brother. I come to the jail, first time in my life. Shata, Jewish boys, Moshe, Yaakov, Yitzhak. I can't believe. I go to the head from the jail and I say, I want to make a program here. I want to come twice a week to learning Pirkei Avot with the prisoners. Remember, Pirkei Avot is very interesting because Pirkei Avot is not only religious. Pirkei Avot is, is like psychiatrists. It, a psychologue, they teach you how to behave. I started my Pirkei Avot, little by little, we built a program, 
that the government says that is the most success program till today, more than 40 years, 80% don't go back to jail. Right now, when I sit with you here, we have in the old prisoners in Israel, more than 1,000 prisoners in this program. More than 1,000 prisoners. 80% don't go back to, 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 to the jail. And, and what is the secret? What is the, they ask me, what is the secret? Sometimes we have a big convention. They say the government, they put in psychologen, criminologen, sociologen, cocologen, what you want. Everybody, and don't walk, don't walk. And you come and they started Pirke Overs and they started feeling the learning and they change. What is the secret? The secret is that the power from belief, this is the biggest power that you can have. There was a story, there was very holy, holy rabbi from Baal Shem Tov's students, the name the Bardici Verov, maybe you hear the Bardici Verov, was something special. The Bardici Verov, sometime Pesach night, the Seder, he asked his Gabbai, his manager, I want that you will brought me right now a piece of bread. You hear? Pesach night, a piece of bread? The Gabbai thinks, who can I find a piece of bread? He decided what somebody, somebody there was very, he'd be called the worst man there, crime man. He says, maybe this man has the bread. He comes over to this man, he says, and knocks in the door. He says, he comes, what are you looking? Maybe you left over bread. Bread in Pesach? Three months my, my wife is cleaning the home. Make me crazy. And you are looking for bread. You give him two pets, you know, give him a, uh, and, and send them back. He come to the rabbi, rabbi. I became a fly, but not bread. Two minutes later, the rabbi says, I wanted you who brought me a little, a little drugs, you know, hashish, I don't know how you call those. Hashish is small, a little from the drugs, the strong drugs. I don't know what the rabbi wants from him tonight. Okay, you think, who can I find drugs for the rabbi? It's going back to the same man. He knocks in the door, the man open up the door, I tell you that I have no bread. No, 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 no bread. What are you looking? i looking, you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, the drug. Ah, this? Okay, wait. Two minutes later, he give him a person from the, from the drugs. The, he brought us to the rabbi. The rabbi goes into the synagogue with the drugs. He says, Rabbi Nishaloy, God, look. Not to have bread. Pesach, you have not any policemen, any punishment, any, any jails. I can find a piece of bread. This that I have in my hand, how much policemen looking for them? How much money? Two minutes I find this. What is, this, what is the answer? Believe. If you, why you have not bread Pesach? Because you believe in the Torah. You believe that you're Jew, you keep up Pesach. This is the answer, the guys in the jails. Of course, the most secret is that you give them love. They feel that you are a brother. You want to help them. It's an old system, not the time to... I will give you only an example. Think that somebody arrived by, come to the home from this prisoner, knock in the door, and say, you know, your husband in jail receive a special prize because he, he learns, he, make, he became very uh, good, uh, what you call, uh, in the exam. Oh, somebody thinks of him. You come home to the prison's home, you speak to his children. They need a bar mitzvah, they need a chasne. He feels that you don't only come and teach him. You have, you're like a brother. This change, Baruch Hashem, hundreds come back and they don't go to, to, to jail more. And this is only because you give them love and you give them belief. And they understand they, they, that you love them. Because I want to tell you, my friends, you say every day in the morning, Baruch Elokenu 
שבראנו לכבודו. Every day in the morning you say, I thank you, God, that you created me with you honor. What means? What means with you honor? What is the honor? I say, I give an example. A father in America has his son, one son in America, in New York, and they have two sons in Israel. He marry off his son in America. The sons in Israel, one is a rich in shekels, he lives in Tel Aviv, and one is a pool, lives in Migdal Emek. He sent a letter to his son in Tel Aviv, the rich man. Your brother became the wedding. The wedding will be in Waldorf Astoria in New York, the biggest hotel. Come to the wedding, take your children, take your brother from Migdal Emek, his, his children, his wife. Everything that you will spend for mine honor, I will give you back. Oh, this Israeli says the father will give him back. He takes his wife, go to Tel Aviv, Dizengoff Center, to a boutique, you know, boutique. Find them the nice clothing. He himself put in the nice clothing for himself and children. But his, his brother and Migdal Emek only tell him, you know, this in this day, me flying to America, you have, I have a, a ticket from Elal, come. But he don't go to buy for his brother's clothing. He don't take his brother's wife to the boutique. The day coming from the wedding, two families fly to America. In the airport in Kennedy, the father, the Hatan, the bride, the, and the family, the waiting. First come up, the son from Tel Aviv, with the boutique, you know, with the whole thing. Who he says, oh, this is my children, this is my grandchildren, beautiful. Then come up the under brother from Migdal Hemek, not clothing, that a father became shame. What can he do? He takes his son, brought him clothing for the Hasnefin. After the wedding, time is over, we need to go back. This son from Tel Aviv is waiting for the check. The father says, everything what you will pay, I will give you back. He don't hear anything. He comes to his father. You know how much cost for the boutique? How much I make, uh, take money from the overdraft in the, in the bank? I need to give me back. The father said, you're a big boy. You will walk a little out there where you'll pay back. He says, but you promised me. I promised you. I have the letter. Show me the letter. Okay. Everything what you will do for mine honor, I will give you back. If you will do for mine honor, you will take care of your brother. You will take care of his wife. You will take care of his children. But you spend for you honor. I never tell you that I will give you back for you honor. This is Baruch Elokeinu. When you want to be close to Hashem, only when you show God that you're doing for his honor, when you're caring for your brother, when you're caring for others, not only for yourself, that you will have a good life in good people and children and everything. This is the philosophy from Judaism. This is what Rabbi Kiva says, Vo love your brother like you love yourself, is the most part from Torah. Ze klal gadol batorah. And this is the work. After five years walking in the streets, in the bars, in the, in the, in the jails, Many times I sit with crime people, very hard crime, but when you say to them face to face, he says he's a good man, he has seichel, he has a feeling, you think, I come, that this man is a, is a criminal. But when you look in, you see the problem. What was? He grew up in a broken home. He never received love. He never received education. And he grew up in an atmosphere from crime. If you will take him at the right time, when he's 10, 11, and you give him love, education, feeling, he will be the best boy. I make one time a, a, a Hanukkah party in jail, in the beginning. I left the jail and I give a kiss one from the prisoners. Spontaneous. Two days later, I receive a, 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 a postcard. It says, Rabbi, I've been the prisoner that you give him a kiss, I sit in my soul and I cry 
and I write you the letter. I want that you know that is the first time in my life that somebody gives me a kiss. I understand this is the problem. Then I decided I must do start up with the children when they're holy, before they go to jail, before they go to crime, before they go to drugs. And in, in 1973, I started Migdal O institution with 18 boys. In Baruch Hashem, today we have more from 6,000 children, we have more from 20,000 graduates. 900 people working together. <laughs> 900 people working with me here today. We have also a program for 8,000 boys and girls all over Israel, under 60 branches every night. And these boys used to go to the street, take drugs, fighting. They coming, they make homework, they play, they do everything. Then they have connection with the home, we go together. And, and, and this is the answer. The answer is, to give you an example, last week was a bar mitzvah, one from the boys. We make every boy bar mitzvah. Two weeks before the bar mitzvah, this boy running after me, every time that I've been in school, Rabbi, palmist me, what is one? You will not believe what a boy from a bar mitzvah asked the rabbi maybe 10 times for the bar mitzvah. What he want? To be sure that his father don't come to the bar mitzvah. Because his father has beat him and is afraid maybe he will come to the bar mitzvah. This is children, they go through girls and boys, thousands of kids, not to believe in Eretz Yisrael. And Baruch Hashem, the idea that you need to love your brother like you love yourself, this is teaching everybody that walk together because this is Judaism, this is the most important that can be. I see in my life that every Jew has a neshome. I don't believe the religious, not religious, Sephardim, Ashkenazim, every Jew, I can, I can tell you stories. This is not to believe. But I see they change from one day to the other day. One time, I sit at home. Somebody knocks in the door, and it's an open door in the morning. He say, I've been captured. What means you've been captured? He says, I, will, I live in Hulon near Tel Aviv. I take a law for money. I need money. I take a law with big interest. I need to pay 50,000 every month. I have not. Two guys, the Hando world, come in the middle of the night. They take me from the home, take the telephones, take them to the beach in Tel Aviv. They take a gun and they say, if you don't pay, we will kill you. He sees that he's going to be killed. He don't know me, but it may be from television for them. He says, Rav Grossman in Migdala Emig is my uncle. Take me to them, he will give you the money. <laughs> they, they put them in from the beach in the car and they brought them to, to me. When I see this, I go out and I ask him, come in. You need money? Okay, I need to go to the bank to brought you money. But I, I have mine guys, there was also big, big shots like El Capone, like Pinchas. <laughs> I have many, many. I decided I will, learn, I will teach him something. I go, I collect 15 minor guys, and I come back with my Hasidim. <laughs> and they come, I come home, and they look my Hasidim. And my Hasidim tell them, I will also a thief, I will also a gangster. If you will have the herets for the rabbi, okay. If not, me put it in, in a sack, me put it in, in, a, in a village, in our village. The old day, they speaking, the end, this man from Cologne has a car. They give, he signed his car, he give him the car, finish the case, and these two guys leave. A day after, I have a wedding for my brother in Bnei Brak. In the middle of the wedding, the two guys come, a new story. The two gangs, what are you looking? We need to speak to you. Rabbi, me walking for the big ones from the hunter world. They sit in, in, in hotels in Tel Aviv, they make the money, and me working for them the dirty, dirty job. Yesterday, when Ms. Bayou in home, 
And we see you guys, they changed themselves. They started the learning Torah, they changed. We want also to come to make tshuva. Take us from this, take us out from the job that we're working, the bad job, the dirty job. And these two guys changed themselves and they became beautiful formulas. Yesterday is ready. Yesterday is ready to kill somebody. And right now, he changed himself. This is the job that we need to do. My, my brothers and sisters, the time is very holy time. We come close to the Giulia. Only 70 years was the, was the Holocaust. In the Holocaust, Hitler and Marshimo don't ask if you're religious, not really. Every Jew in that any to kill. And the opposite must to be, if we want to do it, that every Jew to be important for us. Because if we want to have miracles, we need to walk to see him. And I want to share with you something. A male, not religious, from the Galilee, the name is Moti Dotan, near Tiberia, called me and he says, Rabbi, I need to speak to you. Orgy. I met him, he says, I was yesterday come back from Germany. I take a, a delegation from 10 mayors to Germany because I've been the head from the delegation. They give me the honor to speak in Germany in the parliament. I finished speaking in the parliament. One from the members from the parliament from Germany comes over to me and says, I need to speak to you. He take me on the side. He said to me, my father passed away a couple months ago. And before he passed away, my father, he told me his secret life, that he was a big, big officer in the army from Hitler. He was a Nazi. And he was a big officer in the Luftwaffe, with the planes. And one from the job that he became to destroy the Jewish synagogues. And he decided, I want to know what is a synagogue. He's going in secret synagogue. He says to his son, and I see that the Jewish people have a holy place there, the Torah, you know, the heart. He goes over, open up, and he touched the Torah, and he sees that it's parchment. The Torah is parchment. Oh, the parchment is good for me. I can make the parchment a cover of my certificate from the army. He has a certificate from the army. He thinks I will take this, this, uh, this parchment and make it for a cover. He takes the Torah, open the Torah, take his certificate, put in off the Torah, cut up like a Nazi, you know, the Germany exactly, and make it for a cover for his certificate. And he has us in his, in his pocket for 60 years. Before he passed away, he says to his son, his son is a member in the parliament in Germany, take us and see that this will come to Israel, the holy man. This parliament member sees the mayor, is the head from the delegation from Israel. He says, I want to keep up the palms to my father, take us. I want to show you something. This is, this is the, 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 what you call the certificate from the Nazi. See, this is the man. This is a certificate from the Nazi. Here you have those stamps, the old fly. This is the part from the Torah. They take up. They take up the part from the Torah, put in like this. Make us like this for a cobble and have us in his pocket for 60 years. When I receive this, I want to see what part it take out from the Torah. In the Torah, you have 600,000 letters. But greater the world, go out from Egypt, the old mitzvot, 630 mitzvot. One part is a prosophy that will be a holocaust. In the end, we will come back to Eretz Israel. In the end, God says, be careful. Do everything that will not come back. And this is the part that they pick up. Can you believe? 
a Nazi. You don't know Hebrew. He will can cut out by Shabbat, by Pesavel, by Ma. He cut up exactly the process, what you can nevu. How do you say nevu in English? Prophecy. He take up this prophecy only apart from 6,000 letters. Can somebody explain me? This mayor is not religious. He says, from this story, I see that the Torah is MS, but this can be regular. When I receive this, I say to myself, why God sent this paper, this, this story to Rav Grossman? Maybe my job is to go and speak to people and tell them what the Talmud says. If you will be united, if you will be together, if you will love the brother, if you be caring, God says, I will take care of you. This is my mission. If you keep up, please, became more spiritual. The whole idea, the beautiful idea from this Sinai uh, uh, organized at Ms. Hill, this conference that the chief rabbi, I, I want to give him again, Yashar Koach Gadol, come together people, by me. With your permission, I will make a broche. Baruch atah adoinoi Eloheinu melech haolam shakol niya bitbaro. Lechaim. Why I make a broche? God became bigger if I make a broche? He became less? No. You receive something. You have a body. You, you're healthy. You have water. Say thankful. The idea from broche is say thank you. Why when you go to visit with somebody and you eat in his home, you understand when you leave, you'd say, you need to say thankful. Why are you not thankful for God? This is the idea from blessing. I have not to do only with religious. Thankful. You have life. You receive to eat. I want to include with you a special story that happened to me. Six years ago was the Lebanon war in Israel. The Lebanon war, they attacked Israel, the old Galilee, the Hezbollah. Then the government decided to fight. I received a telephone call from somebody in Yerushalayim. The name is Yossi Paloch. I don't know him before. He says, my son is a paratroop. He, I go to visit my son in the base from the army, Silkin, near Tel Aviv. I find 700 paratroops in a hunger. You know what means a hunger? The two things, the four things, a hunger. What happened? They be called, the all 700 paratroops, to fight, but the government don't decide to fight. Ulmert was then their prime minister. And start to be only one day, the organized there, they stuck in this angle for 10 days. You can make a shower, you can sleep, you can eat. This father says to me, Rabbi, they will lose their motivation. They need every minute to go to fight. What can we do? I say what we can do. I brought, I want everybody, the old 700 parachutes, to come to my place, to Migdala Emig. I will take one building from the children, take out the children, and will give, make free for them. Six hours later, arrive to Migdala Emek, the 700 parachutes. You know, in the beginning, going, somebody sent a hymn to somebody, say, oh, we're going to a rabbi, who knows, he will take us, he will put us in the synagogue, you'll make Balchuve. They come, they go out from the buses. I have in the campus, a swimming pool. Right away when they go out, I stay there, I say, guys, four stink to the swimming pool. Oh, thank God they don't send us to the synagogue. They sent us to the swimming pool. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. They go to the swimming pool after 10 days, Angel, the swimming pool is a machaye, brought them uh, clothing. They go in, in the dormitory. The dormitory is, is beautiful, like a hotel. In the night, I make him a barbecue party with Hasidic music. They dancing the old nerves that they have the 10 days, they put in in dancing, you know. In the middle of the dancing, 
some from the officers receive a telephone call from his uncle in France. The uncle in France said to himself, I will try to call him, I know there's a wall. Maybe he will open up, I will hear shooting. He start to use shooting, he use music. He says, you crazy in Israel, you're going to in the wall with music? He says, no, Rav Grossman, take us, tell him the story. This man says, give me the rabbi. I take the phone. He says, rabbi, my name is Alan Green. I live in France. I buy a new Sefer Torah in Jerusalem. I pay $40,000 for my synagogue in France. I've been so excited what you're doing with the soldiers. I decided right away, I don't take the Torah to France. I give us a gift for your school. I take the all. Yeah. I take the microphone like this, say, guys, look what a gift I receive in your honor. I receive whatever I receive at all. I started to sing more. I called the Sofel, the writing from the Torah in Jerusalem, please, seven o'clock in the morning, brought the Torah to us. Seven o'clock, he arrived with the Torah. The Torah is just finished. Only we need to finish the last part. I go in in the dining room, the whole 700 power troops eating. Guys, you give that I receive in your honor is here, the Torah is here. Big thing to have a letter in the Torah because every Jew is connected. If you want, you can have the sechut, go over to the sofer and have a letter in the Torah. 700 power troops, mostly not religious, cuckoos, earrings, everything. Everybody stays in the line. You want to have a letter in the Torah. You see every Jew as a part, as an Ishomer. In the evening, I come, I brought them shekels. The children in the school make me shekels in nylons. I explain. Everybody from you that want a shekel, a shekel is like a, a, the money in Israel, take the shekel, keep us. After the war, you will give us a pool man. That means that all the time they're in the war, you have a mission to come back. Everybody wants the shekel. Lawyers, doctors, they have many, many. Three days later, they receive an order. They need to go in in Lebanon. Flying the power troops in Lebanon, fighting from inside. They became very nervous, you know. They put in the, the missiles. They have missiles of them, everything. And they go into the buses to go to Lebanon. Before they go to the buses, I became very emotionally. I speak to them and I say, you guys, you show God that you believe in God. You have a letter in the Torah. You have a mission to give tzedakah for the poor people. You're going to give your life for Am Israel, for Medinat Israel. You're ready to kill yourself. I promise you, that everybody from you will come back safely. Nobody will be killed and nobody will win them. If you ask me, I, I can palm 700 guys like this, I don't know. In this minute, I was emotionally. They go to the, they go, they go to the, to the wall. 10 days later, I receive a telephone call, 12 o'clock in the night. Gadi, the head from this group, from the army, says, Rabbi, your blessing come true. Many miracles happen. Many miracles happen. And he says, me, me have a palmist because I say to him, when I speak to him, I say, I need from you one palmist. That if my blessing come true, after the war, everybody comes back here to me. You don't go to your parents, to your wife, to your children. You come back here, and here we will thank God, and from here you're going. This officer says to me, Rabbi, 12 o'clock in the night, the old guy sit in the buses by the border from Lebanon, and we will be by you 2 30 in the morning. I call in the kitchen to, to ask for food. I call for music. Music. From weddings, can you be too tardy in Migdala Emek? He says, too tardy, who is going to dance? Mashiach is coming. <laughs> I say, I say, come, you will see. I pay him, too tardy, they arrived. 
in the moon. Instead to go to the dormitory, make a shower, after 10 days walking, they come to me, they kiss me, 1,400 kisses this night. One, one body, one stay up and says, Rabbi, I need to tell you what happened to me. I was not a religious, a true story, he said to me. I, in a group, became a mission in Lebanon in, the, in one from the villages, and some soldier make a mistake and put in a flashlight. And this Hezbollah find that over there. They sent a missile to us, and suddenly two horses arrived, two horses. They jump against the missile, they push the missile away, and they were safe. So much, I never think that the government, the army, takes everything in tapes. Couple years ago, two years ago, the television in Israel called me and say they have all, everything what I tell you, they have in, 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 in tape, the, the army coming to Migdala Emek, my blessing. I say to him, give me. I would like that you will see this. I have this here right now. I arranged, they will see this part, please. במלחמת לבנון השנייה, באמצע המלחמה, אני מקבל טלפון מיהודי שקוראים לו יוסי פלוך מירושלים. מספר לי שהבן שלו הוא צנחן. הלך לבקר את הבן שלו בסירקין בפתח תקווה, מחנה צבאי, ומצא שם קרוב ל-700 צנחנים באנגר, אנגר של טנקים. הם היו אמורים להיות שם יום-יומיים, להתארגן לקראת המלחמה, היציאה שלהם ללבנון. בגלל הבלגן שהיה בממשלה, שהחליטו לא, כן עולים, לא עולים, נתקעו שם כעשרה ימים. עשרה ימים מאות צנחנים באנגר, בלי אפשרות להתרחץ נורמלי, לישון, להחליף בגדים. אומר לי האבא הזה מירושלים, הרב גרוסמן, מה עושים? צריכים לתת להם מוטיבציה, צריכים לראות מה... אמרתי לו, מה עושים? אני מזמין את כולם למגדלות. אני עומד, יש לידינו בריכת שחייה, ליד קריית הבנות. חבר'ה, כולכם לבריכה. תסתכלו מי זה הרב הזה, במקום להגיד תפילת מנחה ערבית, הוא מלא לבריכה. חבר'ה, קיבוצניקים, מושבניקים, קוקויים, כל הסוגים, עמך ישראל. עשיתי להם מסיבה על האש, עם תזמורת חסידית. רקדו ושרו. שהוצאנו מקו הגבול, והוצאנו אותם מעלמה ומאביבים ומנהריה ומעכו. רצינו בהתחלה להביא אותם לפה, אבל כשהקטיושות הגיעו לפה, אז שכרנו מקומות במרכז הארץ. אז זה התחיל בארבע מקומות, וזה היום כבר מעל, זה קרוב ל-7,200 ילדים, ב-18 מקומות. ואתם בעזרת השם תהיו שמחים, ואתם תהיו בריאים, ואנחנו עכשיו משפחה אחת. ואתם תזמינו אותי בעזרת השם לבר מצוות של הילדים ולחתונות שלכם ולשמחות ותמיד תזכרו את מגדל אור, את מגדל העמק. בשבילי זו זכות הכי גדולה שאני יכול לתת לכם טיפת הנאה. אני מוכן לתת את כל כולי בשבילכם. אמרת היום למפקד, 
מה שצריכים, איזה ציוד, מה שצריכים, אני מוכן, כי אני מאמין ש... יש לנו רשימה. אני... או. אמרתי למפקד, הוא אמר לך. מחר הוא יפגוש אותי ויש רשימה ובלי נדר אני אשלים את הרשימה הזאת. ולכן אתם צריכים להאמין בדרככם ולהיות חזקים. והעיקר להאמין בקדוש ברוך הוא, לפתוח בשם. שמע ישראל, השם אלוקינו, השם אחד. אני מברך אתכם, אני הקטן, מברך אתכם בכל לב שהקדוש ברוך הוא ישמור אתכם ויציל אתכם מכל צרה ומצוקה ומכל נגע ומחלה וישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיכם. יטבעו שונאיכם תחתיכם, ויעטריכם בכתר ישועה ובתרץ ניצחון. ויקוים בנו הכתוב שהקדוש ברוך הוא השם ילחם לכם, ובעזרת השם ננצח בגדול. תהיו בריאים ונמשיך בשמחה. התקשר אליו יהודי מצרפת, אלן גרין, יהודי, והוא מס... אומר לו, מה הרעש הזה? אז הוא אומר לו, אנחנו פה חיילים, הגיעו, אז הוא אומר, ככה, ככה הוא אמר לי עכשיו, שהוא שולח מחר לכאן ספר תורה חדש שכותבים אותו, ואנחנו נכתוב אות בשביל כל אחד ואחד מכם, ואת הספר תורה הזה הוא תורם למוסד כאן לילדים. אז תראו כבר מה יהיה. מה הרווחנו? זה עכשיו אמר לי אבי. אז תראו איך שמתגלגל, יהיה כבר כאן ספר תורה, ויזכרו אתכם תמיד בשמחות, והספר תורה תשמור עליכם, ותמשיכו בשמחה, תמשיכו. אנחנו כמילואימניקים, כרגע כבוד הרב סופר אותנו למותם. אתה מחיה אותנו. בזכותך, תדע לך, הציוד הזה של בת העם יחסוך המון חיי אדם. אין צל של ספק. אין צל של ספק. בעזרת השם בריאים ושלמים תיתנו את זה לצדקה. אז עכשיו אתה שליח מצווה, שליחי מצווה אינם מצווים. שלמים, כולכם תחזרו בריאים ושלמים ונשמע ממכם הרבה בשורות טובות
עשרה ימים אני מקבל טלפון מיוני המפקד, המג"ד, הרב הברכה שלך התקיימה. אנחנו כולנו יושבים עכשיו בשתולה באוטובוסים, כולם בריאים ושלמים, לא יכולים לזוז. עשינו נדר שחוזרים אליך לפני הכל. בשתיים וחצי בלילה אנחנו נהיה אצלך. הערתי את החבר'ה במטבח, חבר'ה להכין ארוחת ערב, התחלתי לחפש תזמורת. צלצל לתזמורת, אולי אתם יכולים להיות בשתיים וחצי במגדל העמק, אבל מה קרה? המשיח הגיע. בשתיים וחצי בלילה הם הגיעו, יורדים מהאוטובוסים, כל אחד ניגש אליי, יותר משעתיים עמדתי לנשק אותם ולחבק אותם לנשק, אני לא יכול לתאר את ההתנחשות, לא הייתי בעולם הזה. אחד מהם עוצר, אומר הרב אני חייב לספר לך, מיד עכשיו היינו קבוצת חיילים, קיבלנו משימה באחד הכפרים בלבנון לעשות. הלכנו לחפש מקום להיות שם בלילה, ביום למחרת יותר נכון, וירו עלינו טיל ברחוק, והיו שני סוסים שעמדו ארבע מטר מהחיילים, הטיל פגע עשר מטר, היו שני סוסים שהיו ארבע מטר, והם לקחו את זה לקחו אני בן אדם לא דתי. כל מה שקורה, בזכות הרב, הרב נתן לנו ברכה ביציאה, החזיק לנו אצבעות, כל יום היה מתקשר עליי לשאול מה שלומם, חזרנו בריאים ושלמים, בזכות הרב. כולם, כולם שחיינו וקיבלנו. אני מהרגע שעזבתם, לא היה לי מנוחה דקה. קמתי לפנות בוקר, התפללתי. הדלקתי נרות, הלכתי לקברי צדיקים, ביקשתי מהקדוש ברוך הוא שאני אזכה לראות את כולכם חוזרים בריאים ושלמים שאף אחד לא ייפצע. והנה שהחיינו וקיבלנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. אבל אתם בליבי לתמיד ובעזרת השם נתראה מתוך שמחה. תודה רבה. Let's take this power that you have here coming, hearing Torah, spiritual, take us home. Everybody from you need to think I will be ambassador. I will do for my neighbor, I will do for everybody. Be'ezrat Hashem, we will come close to Judaism, we will be together. And soon we'll see you, everybody, in Yerushalayim, Merak Kodesh. Amen ve'amen.